Now we are seeking answers to the big questions. What is the meaning of life? What is our purpose here? How can we find peace within our hearts and in the world? Medical physical themes, which are so popular in music and publishing, are taking the world by storm. And it is time now for movies to be a voice of the times and to help us transform our consciousness. For movies have always had the ability to awaken, to inspire, and to reach and touch millions. Join me, Audrey Hogan, for the visionary power of film. My special guest, Stephen Simon, has created a new genre in filmmaking, and he, he will help us explore with new eyes and new vision what dreams may come. Now you teach a class, Metaphysical Filmmaking in the New Millennium, which I happened to take and was very moved by. And you teach, okay, how to finance, how to find projects and all that stuff, but you really teach how to make dreams come true. And you and your partner used to meditate and try to program the future. Could you tell us about that? Yes, we, we don't believe in operating our business in the way that other people operate their business. Um, yes, there's a certain amount of, uh, Barnett has this wonderful phrase, praise Allah, but tie the camel. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> um, so there's, a, <laughs> there's enough camel tying that we have to do on, an, on a day-by-day right, -day right. basis. <laughs> but basically what we believe in our creation, and the company now has gone through this process and is in the process of, of going through a financing where we're actually going to, we believe, in the next 90 days, have enough money from private capital that's been invested into the company to be able to develop all of their own things and not to have to be Wonderful. in the studio system and not to have to worry about not not to have to worry about homogenizing the material because this kind of material yes. has to be done from a very pure place. You have to, if, as Barnett says, if you're going to make a movie in France, you have to speak French. <laughs> yeah. Right? You should speak French. I like um, Barnett's little. So <laughs> it's wonderful. He's a he, he's here in spirit with us today. Um, what we what we've really been able to we feel do is change the paradigm the way we do business. We believe that the way we create is magic. And we have an extraordinary group of people now that we work with. Mm -hmm. And together we have Tuesday night magic sessions where we envision what the company is going to be five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 mm -hmm. years from now. And we put it out into the universe. Barnett and I both meditate every day and we try as best we can at least once a week do a meditation together where we can create, bring the future and bring it into the present and really create from our, our dreams from our intent, from our passion, yes. from what we want, from our choice, what the future is going to be. If we really believe that you create your own reality. Well, you have that very powerful meditation which affected me very deeply, which is you go into a room in your meditation yeah. and you have the big book, which is your belief system, and then the fireplace, you, you rip out the belief systems that don't work, you put it in the fireplace, and you put a new belief system in. Well, I have to say that, uh, as I say in the class, that is not, um, that was created by um, a wonderful teacher who I don't think I'm going to get into the details of that because I want to protect the privacy of it, but that yes. was taught to me by someone else. And it's something that I try to impart um, to people in our class because if you create your own reality, you also might have beliefs that are getting in the way of what you want to try to do. And we work on this, I work on this every single day of my life. You know, none of us ever reach this perfect place. And you talk about me being successful. Um, yeah. I will tell you that I have run three major film companies in my life, and I've been fired from all three jobs. You know, and, <laughs> I um, love it. You know, most <laughs> entrepreneurs, as there's this wonderful character um, in Jerry Maguire, the Dickie Fox character yeah. that comes in from time to time, as he says at the end of the film, in truth in life, I have failed as much as I've succeeded. And that's true. And I think that I've made more films that haven't made money than have made money. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done a lot of things that haven't worked. But I'm still here. And this dream that we have of creating this film company is now a reality. And what I hope that that does with people is say, look, you can have a dream and fail and not be a failure. Mm -hmm. If you try at something and it doesn't work, okay, accept the fact that it didn't work. Don't try to deny it. Say, okay, that failed, but I'm not a failure. And I can keep going. And as long as you don't let yourself get discouraged, 
then anything can happen. And we're a perfect example of that. How did we get $75 million to make what dreams may come? Nobody knows. We don't know. Stephen, were you always spiritual? When yes. did it all begin for you? As a child? Yes. I always had a sense. <laughs> that George Goebel, the old comedian, had this wonderful phrase once that, um, that the world was a tuxedo and he felt like a pair of brown shoes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I always grew up. And I think a lot of us who, have, yes. who came to this life as spiritual beings um, had difficult and challenging childhoods, having events happen mm -hmm. to us where we didn't feel really a part of the group. Uh, a part of our peers. I think most of us and people yes. who are listening today and <laughs> yes. watching today are thinking, oh yeah, that's me. I, I didn't, you know. And yeah. <laughs> um, I always had a sense that there was something out there, something just beyond the pale uh -huh. that wasn't quite reachable by my consciousness. And as I got into my 20s, it became more and more and more conscious. And then when I actually read the book that Somewhere in Time was based on, which I read in 1975, I thought, okay, I got to get into the movie business now because that's the first film that I have to make as a producer. So it kind of brought me through that period. Because you started out as a lawyer. I and started you just off as a lawyer. so passionate yes. <laughs> about Somewhere in Time, which I just watched again, which is so beautiful. Thank you. It just was so beautiful. I did start off as a lawyer, and I was not a very good one, because uh, my heart wasn't really in it. And I was like, begged my way into the film business. Right. Um, I'm glad you brought this up, though, about the wounded child, because. Um, you lost your father at a very young age, mm -hmm. and you talked about that in yes. the class. So you definitely had a lot of obstacles to overcome. Well, again, I think if you look at people who are um, openly pursuing a spiritual way of life and actually doing that in their work, whatever it might be, I think a lot of us chose difficult childhoods to get us ready for this period of time, this extraordinarily magical, yes. wonderful turning of the millennium where all of the stuff that's been talked about forever that the Mayan calendar says the world is going to end in 2012 yes. and all of that. The world as we know it is ending, but not in some Absolute. cataclysm. Oh, beautiful. Because said. we're evolving as a species. Thank you so much. And it's gonna, it, it is our belief yes. that we're about to walk into this extraordinary time of magic and realization and evolution and peace. And maybe what's underlying all of this in, in society, certainly in American society, is that those of us who are in the baby boom, and I'm 53, I was born in the first year of it, who fought the battles of the 60s, which I think was the adolescence of this entire Absolutely, movement. Yes. The first learned, stage kind of of it. Yeah. Yes. Learned certain things that we had to do as adults, and in the 70s and 80s had to do certain things as adults to really come back to where we are now at the end of the 90s and as we go into the next century to really bring all of this dip now to fruition, to say, okay, we learned how to do this. We learned that you can't have leaders in a movement that you really focus on, because if those leaders die, and we were all so devastated when all of our leaders were killed, whether it was Martin Luther King or, or the Kennedys, you look at this spiritual awakening in the world, and there are people all over who have certain specific contributions to make, but there isn't a Martin Luther King. So that if, you, if a Martin Luther King dies, there is no Martin Luther King in this spiritual world. So it can't die. You know, there can't be one person or two people or three people. You and I are, 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 are two of thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people who are making contributions. So if anything happened to any of us, it wouldn't change what's happening. And I think that's one of the great things that's happening now in the world. Which brings us back to the entertainment industry and its power because it really can reach millions. And, you, and, and I think that we were all prepared to have the courage to step out against the norm and, and say what we had to say and make these concepts, which are so, wow, to say you create your own reality, uh, suicide, uh, you know, destroys the natural order of things. And all the things that you said in the movie is a tremendous, uh, it's just the beginning. And, I, and, I am, and I'm grateful, as we all are, that you have made this film. And can you just, we have a look, one minute left or two minutes. Tell us what you're working on now. Um, well, Conversations with God. Conversations with God we're doing. We're going to do that as um, actually a series of three network television mm -hmm. films that we're going to do on Conversations with God. Um, we have several other metaphysical bestsellers that have been around for a long time. And fortunately, the authors now are at least beginning to have confidence that we will deal with the material from a standpoint of integrity. So we're doing a lot of that. We are uh, very involved with a company called Sightsound.com, which is 
um, one of the innovators in the internet and actually owns the patents for delivering films on the internet mm -hmm. and we're going to be doing original movies for the internet within the next year or two and we think that's an extraordinary opportunity for our company and as I said we are in the process of going through a fundraising effort so that we can actually be independent and make these films and these television projects on our own without any of the interference that usually happens in the creative process in Hollywood so that the people who are attracted to them can go and say okay they didn't back down I think maybe more than anything what we're proud of with What Dreams May Come mm -hmm. is that there isn't a single place in that film where we wimped out, you know? Yes. There isn't, there's not any compromise in the vision. You may not agree with the vision, Absolutely. but there's no compromise in the vision, and I think more than anything else, we're really proud of that. And I thank you, Stephen, so much. You're welcome. Really. It's been great fun, and, and hopefully we will uh, we'll all remember yes. in the future that this time we came here to win. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'm Audrey Hope, and this is Real Women. And we're dedicated to life-altering perspectives that can transform our world. And thank you so much, Constance Demby, for this beautiful music. So beautiful. Thank you.